Devon, I think that's a pretty good segue because you mentioned cannot forget about Scotty Scheffler. We want to talk about the first two episodes of Full Swing Netflix documentary. Fantastic. Those are my initial thoughts. I'm loving it. Uh, it's it, I've heard this feedback from a bunch of different people, but overall, it does feel a bit choppy. Just like, all right, we're talking the first two episodes of the frenemy between JT and Jordan, and then the second episode is more of a Brooks versus uh, Scotty type thing, which is interesting because I feel like they don't really know each other all that well, as opposed to the first episode where it's like the best friends. And now it's like, like I don't think Brooks and Scotty have ever – have they ever even been in the same room together? It feels like. Like, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, uh, they tried to, like, have some manufactured drama between the two of them. But, like, we're in Jupiter. Then we're in Dallas. And it was – I liked episode one a bit more than episode two. But those are my initial thoughts on the first two episodes of Full Swing. Uh, T won't take it away from there because there's a lot more to cover uh, that we want to go. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, episode one, um, first off, I, I'm just happy to have – any kind of golf content like this like we've told the viewers we basically i'm not part of the reason we we rebooted the podcast was because we knew this netflix series was coming out wanted to to hash it out so it felt like christmas when it was coming out uh the day it came out and i think the first episode or was arguably like two of my favorite golfers or at least favorite golfers to watch and um I think one thing that was kind of interesting was they're telling the story of how Spieth is, you know, so much better than JT. It was, you know, Spieth turned pro first. Then they kind of talk about how JT, you know, it's kind of chasing him. Spieth went to Harbor Town. JT didn't play that well. And I was like, guys, I don't know if we have the story right here. Like (laughs) a year or two ago, we were wondering, like, what the hell is like is, J- is Spieth ever going to come back, you know? And they're kind of buying into the story that Spieth is that much better. I think Scotty T has actually made the, the prediction that JT will have a better career. And this was two years ago. So to, to your point, there was, I forgot who, which golf writer it said, but they said, oh, Justin Thomas was kind of always known as Jordan Spieth's friend. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? And you yeah, cover just, golf for a living? Him. I'm not buying into that story. And that's the story that I feel like they were telling. And uh, so that was kind of, you know, if I'm being a, a, a golf, you know, kind of snob and not really letting them tell a story, just kind of my thoughts there. But um, I mean, to that point, by the same thought process, would you say the same thing about Patrick Cantley? Would you say the same thing about Patrick Rogers or Bryson? Like all these guys who were actually my class, class of 2011, we had a freaking stacked class. He made a comment about that on the doc. Like, yeah. we had a really good high school yeah. class. We all knew each other. So, yeah, I guess you could say all of them were George B's friend because he won first on tour. Like, that just <laughs> – I laughed at that. I literally laughed at that. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't buying into that because, you know, we've talked about Jordan's struggles and how good JT is. So, but the – just the overall, you know, getting access of the – to them in the private jet gambling playing hammer at uh, uh what's the tulsa course southern hills um that was freaking awesome that's what i want to see gambling private jets them drinking beers that's exactly what i wanted to see i almost yeah. wish i could have gotten more of it but uh i mean that that was so cool i i, I like seeing you know what kind of gambling games they're gonna do um and what just kind of like what an average round looks like so i thought that was that was a really cool part of the the documentary of that first episode something i really liked no i totally agree uh, it's, uh i saw one of the oh gosh i can't remember which pj tour wife it was but they were like don't think that we all fly private jets because like <laughs> all of them are flying private all over the country and which in the past actually billy horschel kind of addressed it which i know Billy Ho can kind of rub people the wrong way or whatnot, but he brought a good point. He was like, look, if I pay, you know, X amount of dollars to fly, it's not even necessarily private semi. I think a lot of it's like wheels up. So semi private type thing. He was like, all right, if I pay, you know, 10 grand for that, but that saves me a shot. He's like, that shot could 
win me 30,000. He's like, that's worth it because he gets to see the course before somebody else does. So like yeah. that thought process, it does make sense why they do that. But I remember I flew back from the players from Jacksonville down to Houston Sunday in 2019. You're the Rory one, no big deal. I was there. Uh, let's see, Jonathan Vegas was on my flight. Cody Gribble was on my flight. And somebody else, I, oh, gosh, I can't remember. One other PJ Tour guy was on my flight back to Houston because they were either – Jonathan Vegas lives in Houston – and then a few of them were connecting to go somewhere else. So, like, yeah, don't want to make that clear. They, let you, they let you on your, they let you on your private jet. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, have a, I have a special relationship uh, with the Jacksonville Airport. <laughs> you know, they felt really sympathetic for me after I slept in the Denny's that night. So it was. <laughs> uh, that's a true story, by the way. Uh, go back and listen to that episode. It's a, I actually re, re, uh, re talked about that. It's like episode 10 or whatever. Anyway, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Lots happened since. But yeah, um, no, it was fantastic. I, I loved it. A, yeah, give me, I want the gambling games. I, think, I want the content. I want, they, they did a good job of getting good access to the players. And you touched it when you first started going. It's unique. It's different. It's something that we love. It kind of felt like Christmas morning. Yeah. I think to put a bow on episode one, we knew that JT won the PGA Championship, but I forgot about the comeback. I mean, that was pretty mm-hmm. insane. Um, I mean, I want to say it was the largest comeback in major championship history. Don't quote me on that, but it was pretty insane. And being able to retell that story was something I, you know, was good for me to hear, and I, I had totally forgotten about and. The, I was getting nervous when the playoffs started, and they showed that first hole, and JT makes like a you know eight footer for birdie, and um, you know I, I felt like I was watching the tournament again. So that that was uh, really well done, and I, I, I'm happy I kind of got to see the story again. So episode one w- was awesome. So I guess we can go ahead and transition into uh, number two since it's number, fresh on. Yeah. Just watched it, so give me the initial thoughts, Scotty T. Yeah, number two was a more – it was juicier. And we'll say it did feel, as I mentioned earlier, it felt a bit forced in a way of like some sort of manufactured drama, if you will. I get that they – yeah, to your point, Scaff, they need to tell stories, right? They need to try to come up with something. And Brooks not playing well was a big story. Whether if it's and he even touched on it, I, that it was a very unique perspective in the Brooks Kepka's mind because whenever he talks to the media and whatnot, he's always like, "Yeah, I'm here to win." Like, I don't, I don't have friends out on tour. I don't. It's like I'm just here to win and have a really smoking hot fiance. Like that's that feels like that's Brooks Kepka's Brooks Kepka's shtick. But this really kind of got to see a peek behind the curtain how much he was struggling. I'm sure he has a mental coach, but there's part of me that wants to be like. Man, you need to like see a therapist, not just a mental coach, like a full on therapist. He he has some demons in the last 18 months that have developed some mental scarring that I don't know if he can recover. And like I maybe that's part of the reason why he went over to live. If you were, I think he said it last week, Scaff, he's the business owner. He's got his two his four major championships. Let's close up shop, man. Let's cash out. Unless um, see, that's why it's so interesting though, because he wants to win all the time. Or he says it's all about winning. It's win or go home. He said that multiple times, right? Win or go home. But he's not playing against the best in the world anymore. So that's I think it's just really interesting to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, he also said too. He's like, who's the best in the world, Scotty? Because I forgot they went head to head at the uh, the waste management last year when Scotty won. And mm-hmm. he said he's like, yeah, whenever you're playing the best, whenever you're playing well, you're not thinking about golf. He's like, but I'm not playing well, so I can't stop thinking about golf. That is so true, man. Like, you go out and have a bad round, you're just like, man, I'm reliving it. You know, and, you know, maybe it's in between and in the bathroom at work. Like, I'm working on, well, what's that move I got to feel? It's, it, especially when it's your life, it can really consume you. I mean, I even felt that way during junior golf. I'm sure you did too, Scaff. I can't imagine when it's actually for your living. So, uh, yeah, it just it, felt like Brooks has got some demons. Yeah, he's got to work did, through them, man. Did he? Did he drop the line in that episode where it was, when I'm playing bad, I never think I'll get it back. When I'm playing good, I never think I'll lose it. I think he said something like that. But yeah, episode two, I was absolutely shocked 
I could not believe that this was the, I don't even know. I don't even know if I believe that this was the real Brooks Kepka. We've seen this guy is, I don't practice. I don't care. I show up. I win. I don't only really care about majors. And the dude, you talk about seeing a therapist, the dude's drinking wine on the couch with his mom saying, what's Scotty chef for thinking about like comparing him to Scotty. And I'm like, wow, this guy's like, he cares. Seems a little self-conscious, which I was like, I would have never thought this was the case with Brooks Kepka, but it almost felt like he was overdoing it for the cameras, but I wouldn't even think that was something that he would want to kind of buy into. So I thought it was kind of weird. I was shocked to see the side of him. Um, but even the comments he made about like, I think he's playing the pro am and he's like, yeah, like I wish I would have played baseball longer. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, like, I don't know. That was like kind of, I think that's kind of the image he likes to play up. But then, you know, in this documentary, he's like, I don't know, like, if I'll ever, you know, play good golf again. I'm like, who are you? This is weird. And then, um, yeah, it just shows, you know, then kind of the contrary. They show Scotty, and he's like, honestly, so boring, <laughs> in my opinion. I was just like. Boring? He's just, yeah, I was just like, whatever. This episode no. Kind of, <laughs> Dallas boys aren't going to like that one. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it I'll say text of, Tanner that he was out there at Riviera this weekend. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm aware. Um, but I don't know. I, I I really liked episode two. I liked how they just showed the complete differences. I, I'm just I couldn't get over that that Brooks episode with how surprised I was. And then when the uh, they do kind of leave you at a cliffhanger at the end with Brooks, you know, as he's having the shit year or so, and they bring up the. Saudi backs live golf and it looks like he genuinely laughed. Like this is a joke that you would bring that up. That was kind of my reaction from it. And, you know, he kind of tells the story that it was a last minute decision around the U S open. Like, I know y'all don't believe me, but I, I almost kind of do because when I watched that show, it, it seemed like he really didn't think there was anything or there, this, this live golf had any legs, but he joined um, I don't know. I, I was I was just shocked to see episode two uh, with how Brooks was by, behind the scenes. So, but uh, every episode I, I've gotten kind of mixed reviews from everyone. I've loved all of them so far, and uh, yeah, I hope they, they make a season two because you know, I don't know two two episodes in. I'm I'm very very content so far. Absolutely, I agree. I I like hearing people's reviews because that tells me they're watching. That's a great thing. And the same way that the Formula One doc had that great impact on people watching Formula One on Netflix, I think hopefully this might have the same impact that it does for the PGA Tour. Mixed reviews so far, more positive than negative, I would say. One of my big takeaways, Scaff, and we've talked about it like a billion and one times, but here's a billion and two times. How many good players there are on the PGA Tour? Anybody can win. On any given day, I feel like. And I really got that vibe again when they started covering Scotty Scheffler's uh, little uh, Hughes Ascension rise last uh, last spring, winning down in waste management, winning the match play, winning the Masters. All those guys are just like rolling into Augusta. And you have, I mean, Jordan, JT, all the Masters, like DJ, Brooks, Scotty, Colin Morikawa, like the, you know, can't like the list just goes on and on. I'm like, yeah. holy crap, all these guys are so good, and they're all at the top of their game, too. 100%. And the fact that we don't have some of these live guys, too, I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, one thing I, I did also write down that for the Scotty episode, I think they showed him like winning the first for the first time, but then he like continued to win won the masters and was number one in the world and they showed that in like 30 seconds i was like come on like give the guy a little more credit like we don't need to see brooks talking to his mom on the couch like let's go through scotty's <laughs> progression to world number one speaking of moms i just got a text from my mom um nice very relevant she said watching she's in dallas with my cousins and she said watching full swing 
what the heck are those joggers on Justin Thomas? Dot, dot, dot. Horrible. <laughs> I agree 100%. Uh, we've talked about joggers in the past. I've never been supportive of them, but uh thought, thought that was a good one. I had to share from my, my mom. So shout out, mom. Thank you, Mrs. Scaff. That's a T Bone. Is this where you get your fashion sense? Is that why you're Apparently. the fashion guy? Apparently, yeah. Um, neither one so of us. Not a fan of, you're not a fan of Eric Van Ruin's joggers on the golf course? No, no, I'm not. No ankles should be shown on the golf course. Um, especially JT. I think he was wearing like the black shoes, black socks, black joggers, and just looks weird. Not my. Uh, uh, he's also got. Like, he's also about 140 pounds soaking wet. So yeah, I mean, I guess if you can rock it, you go for it. But I need somebody who's like tall and lanky, like an Eric Van Buren, who's gonna yeah rock him. Yeah, we'll yeah. In the same sense, time. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Pau, uh, Pat Perez rocking joggers. <laughs> nope, not not uh-huh. doing that. <laughs> well, you have to jog. You have to jog before to wear joggers. Ah, there you go. He just crushes beers and gets birdies, but. So one thing I think Liv did do is they allow shorts on the golf course. Uh, we can open this up for a different time because we only have three minutes left here. But uh, I kind of like it. I think it. I think the pro should be able to wear shorts if it reaches like a certain temperature. Like if it's 90, 95 degrees plus and you're having to wear pants out there, that stinks. That is so – that's like unbearably hot. Yeah. Uh kind of a traditionalist i like the pants well at least they're not wearing the knickers and the wool cotton shirts anymore and all that stuff yeah. like i don't know how bobby jones and hagan and all those guys uh tie. did it wearing a the tie, tie too yeah. they would have to like tuck it in their shirt just yeah. and you know what walter hagan still won like 11 majors so and that was probably after he was out partying all night and Doing God knows what, so yeah. Maybe yeah. I should start wearing a tie. Well, you did wear a dress on the golf course once, so you're not too far off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is true. 